what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're talking about halloween ends in this video here again today i didn't plan on doing this many videos related to halloween ends today but this morning there was a new interview that came out from bloody disgusting they had it sent over to them apparently according to the article and jamie lee curtis was going on about halloween ends Lori's mental state in the movie and she teased stuff about the opening sequence so just to dive into what she had to say about halloween ends she jamie lee curtis that being started off by saying it's a movie about a final reckoning between lori and michael there is a battle between them and i and the irony is that the 2018 and 2021 movies were about a woman who was prepared for michael every day of her life since she was 17 years old this is a movie where she's actually moved on lori doesn't see michael coming so she didn't went on to say and that's a very different result so the fight with michael is much more violent unexpected and it has to be like a street brawl uh then she went on to say this movie this other character comes in that she's concerned about but she's not so she's not thinking about michael and then michael comes back and so the fight was an unexpected fight so here's the thing she says that this movie this other character comes in and that she's concerned about but she's not thinking about michael now they don't name the character but again going off of the plot synopsis or the plot log line that character would be Corey cunningham right i mean it could be someone else but most likely no it's not it's Corey cunningham because she goes on to say she's concerned about concerned about this character so like i'm, I'm thinking well, in what way is she concerned about Corey? does she does she see Corey get bullied does she see Corey? um with allison and she's concerned about allison's relationship with the boy because of all this drama surrounding him in what way does she end up just being concerned about him ultimately of course it'll build into Corey developing a relationship with michael and going off of the trailer becoming a copycat killer again going off of the tv spots he'll be becoming a copycat killer and he'll be an issue for laurie strode who will then realize that Corey cunningham was in cahoots with michael and michael will show up as well and her and michael will have this final brawl now see i've already touched on the fact that if that's what happens that the stuff that's uh anticlimactic there is that once again michael was not after Lori. he was after a boy who stole his mask or just a boy in general who he got tired of and he just happened to come across Lori. the coincidental battles again these two they have no conflict there's something that was there for you to write for them to have a conflict going into this movie but we're not focusing on that she also went on to say this in the interview talking about the opening sequence the opening of this movie is every parent's worst nightmare this is a babysitter with a child on halloween night that goes terribly wrong it's so crazy intense now this Inter this uh, article from Bloody Discussing in saying, could this opening have something to do with the mysterious other character? Perhaps. Wow. Really? Yes, it does. <laughs> That's my answer. I, I believe it does. This mysterious other character, no doubt, is Corey Cunningham, and he's the one in the opening. I Maybe I'm in the Twilight Zone, but I could have sworn the plot details had already mentioned that Corey Cunningham would be the person that is standing accused after a babysitting accident sure that doesn't that doesn't outright tell you that he's the one doing the babysitting again i've said briefly in another video maybe he just stumbled onto a accident and he's blamed for it but chances are Corey cunningham is the one who was babysitting and he's the one who directly is impacted by the accident because of the fact that he was the one babysitting said child who again this person is most likely a boy named jeremy going off of the soundtrack titles so we'll ultimately see how this plays out because she also got very emotional jamie lee curtis that being when thinking about how she's not going to get to make another halloween movies with these group of people again uh i think a lot of what she's saying is very genuine i don't think she is coming off as disingenuous in any way even though i know a lot of people will say that they think she is jamie lee curtis has also proven herself to be someone who's very well good or very good well versed at hyping up movies and using words to make you at least invested in how she is describing the movie uh because at the end of the day i know a lot of people come out of these david gordon green halloween movies and they're like this stuff that jamie lee had to say about it was better than the actual movie itself so in a lot of ways you know i'm just again anything she has to say i'm all for it i just don't ever hear what she has to say anymore <laughs> and then go watch the movie with so many high expectations that are in that are impossible to meet 
because at the end of the day this opening sequence that might actually be well executed the way she's described she said it's beautiful it's well shot um if this opening sequence is lackluster then it's just lackluster why does she describe it as anything but lackluster then because again she's not going to come on here and tell you that it's it's in lackluster movie she's not going to do that um at least I don't, I don't think she would ever do that. So, But again, I don't think she's being disingenuous at all. I think she's being very truthful in what she's presenting. The battle that happens between Lori and Michael Myers now more than ever seems like it'll happen at the very end of the movie because of how she's worded certain things as far as like what Lori's focus is on and how she's moved on in this movie. So, again... This mysterious character that she alluded to that, that Lori is concerned about, and then Michael comes back. This mysterious character, of course, must be Corey Cunningham. Something must happen between Corey and Michael that ultimately brings Lori and Michael to their final confrontation. Sure, it'll be entertaining, but again, the problem that I know myself and many other people have already pointed out, these two, they don't have a conflict. They're just fighting by pure coincidence once again, yet the marketing is all about Lori versus Michael. There's not been one utter ins or instance of Rohan Campbell. If I'm wrong, correct me. Rohan Campbell has not done anything to promote any real involvement with the movie outside of putting up a post on his social media to acknowledge that he's in the movie. But every so, so far, some people that are diehard Halloween fans like myself, we're expecting a junk a, a big bulk of this movie to focus on him and his character and this little twisted relationship he develops with Michael Myers. But this is an interesting interview that Jamie Lee Curtis can't had released today. And again, if you ever hear this, Jamie Lee Curtis, I cannot thank you enough again for all of the contributions you've put in place or towards this character of Lori Strode. She is indeed one of the best final girls that have ever existed in the horror genre. Your contributions will always be appreciated. And um, Lori Strode will never be forgotten. If this really is your last bow out as the character, I hope you go out with a bang and do something better than that exit from Resurrection. But if you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.